Welcome to the Talking Reef Podcast. Um, actually, this is another video cast. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, as you can see, uh, this is the same night that I've been doing everything else. Uh, so I've been just kind of on a roll, so I figured I might as well keep going with it. Uh, in this uh, video cast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a DIY kelp washer doser. Uh, now, this is something that I talked about in a previous podcast a couple months back. Uh, this little doser design actually comes from an article on reefkeeping.com, and I'll make sure that I post a link up with it. Uh, we did have it in before. I'm sure a lot of people have already went and checked it out. <clears throat> so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to start with, again, uh, a, this is a um, <clears throat> one-gallon Rubbermaid container. If you remember back from the other episodes, this is the same one that I've been using on for, you know, I got a smaller version for my phytoplankton, and this is the same one that I use for my rotifer cultures. Now, the setup's a little bit different. What we've got here is we've got a, uh, the lid, and it's going to be set up a little bit different. Let me show you. We got two holes drilled in it instead of just one. The next piece that we're going to use is rigid airline tubing, like we did, like we had before. Again, attached with the flex tubing. And the length of this depends on your tank, and I'll show you how that works later. And then on the end here, what we're going to have, kind of move up close so I can show you, is we've got a little air valve, a little check valve. And those two pieces are going to go right together. And you got just like the piece that we're going to use. Okay, so that's the airline, that's the container, that's the lid. That's the basics there. Now, what are we going to put inside of this? We're going to use RODI water. Again, very important that you use RODI water. You do not want to use tap water. There's a lot of chemical reactions and fault that can happen from that. I'm not going to get into the details. Just don't do it. Um, the next thing that we're going to use, uh, this is actually the, the pickling line. Get you up close there. Mrs. Wage's pickling line can be ordered online. You can actually find it in some uh, supermarkets or grocery stores. I get mine online. It's like a case of 12 of these containers for like $50. So, uh, in the case of 12, is going to last you a long time. Uh, I've had these for a long time. The next thing that we're going to use is regular distilled white vinegar. Again, now I don't think this is in the article, uh, but it's something that I use and I'll show you how I use that. But it helps actually dissolve a little bit more of the calc washer into the water. Uh, works a little bit better that way. So what are we going to start with here? Got a little bit of water in there. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some vinegar. This is my big one. I was just using a little one to show you. Um, now this is very technical, so there is actually a real technical way to do it, but yeah, that looks good. So again, you just want a small amount of vinegar, especially when we're doing um, the small container like this, just a small amount in there. Um, really, it's probably less than a quarter of a cup that I put in there if you want measurement. Now, the article in the article it calls for about a teaspoon uh, of pickling lime per gallon of water. Now, what I find is with the vinegar in there, you can actually dissolve more calc washer or more pickling lime powder into the water, and it gives you a little bit stronger. So, what I'm going to do here is with a little bit of vinegar in there, I'm going to take here and I'm going to measure out uh, a half a tablespoon, is what I'm using here, and we're going to go ahead and pour that right in there. I hope this comes out in the video good. So now we've got that in there, little twirl in here, okay, now we've got that mixed in, we're going to take the water, pour some water in there. Okay. Now what I'd like to do here is just start off with just a little bit of water in there. I don't usually fill it up all the way. Um, then what I do is I've got a little stir thing. I go in here and kind of mix it up. Now one thing with calc washer and when you're mixing it up, it's important that you kind of keep, you don't want to stir it hard. You just want a gentle stir. Uh, my pump's going off. Give me one second. Okay, so, okay, I guess that's what happens when we're you know, making video casts. If we didn't have these little interruptions, it wouldn't be a podcast or a video cast in this case. So, again, what I was getting at is you, you want to kind of stir it up in here, but you don't want to aerate the heck out of it. Uh, because when you get the CO2 in there, it actually causes other problems. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into it, just don't do it. So, gentle stirring is basically all I do here. Make sure we get it mixed up good. 
Now when you're working with kelp wasser, the powder, the pickling lime, uh, it's very hazardous. So make sure that you don't inhale any of it. Uh, try to keep the kelp wasser mix off of your skin. The pickling lime is very dusty, it's very powdery, so when you're, when you're pouring it in there, uh, make sure you do everything you can to avoid inhaling it or breathing it. Uh, keep it off your skin, all that fun stuff. So we've got a little mix here. We're going to go ahead and top the rest of that off. And there we go, we've got a mix. Now, uh, again, the mixture and the amounts, uh, they vary as needed. Some people do a lot more, some people do a lot less with the calc powder and stuff like that. Uh, I'm just basing this off the article. I actually use a little bit more. Um, this is a good mix for you when you're doing a small tank or dosing a little bit and you don't have extremely high uh, needs for it. So basically the next part in the process, we're going to put the lid back on this thing that we just filled up. We're going to take the airline tubing that I showed you earlier with the rigid on one end and the little check valve on the other. Actually, I'm going to shrink this up a little bit for the example. We're going to put one end in here. We're going to put the check valve on the other end. Now, what's that other hole for? I know you want to know. It's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take the, another regular tube and that's going to go into that hole. Now, the trick here is when you drill these holes into there, they've got to be the same size as the airline tubing. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to get them in there. So, okay, got that one in there. I'm going to show you how that works in a second. It's a cool little trick. So we've got the airline tubing in there. When you get it in there, again, I don't know if you can see it, but you want to make sure that the bottom of the, air, the, the second tubing is in the air part of here. You don't want it to go into the mix. So we've got it in there just a little bit. And now let me kind of show you how this works. Now this is what's going to actually sit over your tank. But since I'm not doing it with my tank, I'm going to sit it up here and kind of show you how it works and put it into this little bucket here. We're going to open your check valve. This is a little blue valve that I showed you before. We're going to open that up. And the second airline tubing, if we take that and blow into it, it'll start a siphon for us. If I tighten everything up. Oh, looks like I'm using the wrong lid. Let me get the other lid. Oh, nope, there it goes. So it was the right one. Okay, good. So again, I don't know if you can see that, if you can hear it, but we've got the drip going. Not sure. Okay, so basically once you, once you got the drip going into your tank, what you do is you turn the little knob on here. It's going to dial that down to the amount that you need. Usually about one to two, maybe three drips a second is usually good. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off because I don't want to pour it all in there. And that's pretty much it. That's an easy little DIY kelp doser. Let me get this tube out. And that's it. There's a lot of people that ask a lot of questions about how these are set up, how you do them, how exactly do you do them. And I know that actually reading the articles and even looking at the picture sometimes can't be explanatory enough. So just pour that back in there. So now you know. So make sure you share this video with all your friends and everybody else. Tell them to go to the Talking Reef Podcast and check out more videos. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Oh, you know what I can do is I'm going to show you my setup that I actually use for my big tank. Because I don't use this, it's just too small. So um, I actually do calc washer in my top off water. So let me show you how that works. Okay, welcome everyone to Rob's Reef. Yep, there's my fishies. I'm sure a lot of you remember those from the Nemo video I did. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look down here. Turn on my little light here. So first in my auto top off, I've got my little uh, float switch. You can see a little float switch. That goes up to a box, the electrical box. That's what actually controls what I'm about to show you next. So basically all that runs up into this. This is my top off bucket. Inside here is my coke washer. 
You can see the powder and all that fun stuff down there. And basically what I just explained to you is essentially what I do here. I fill up this bucket, five gallons of water. I use about three tablespoons worth of kelp, uh, pickling lime powder with a cup of vinegar. Slowly mix it all up. Again, I, I start with a little bit of water, top it all back off when it's done. Now in here, what I actually have, you can see, this is just a regular little Rio 50 pump, the smallest one I could find. It's got some flex tubing coming out the end, just like that, you can see it. And that flex tubing actually runs right up here to my tank, and it doses in there. Now, if you, as you can see, it is right above the outlet from my return pump. It's very important that when you're dosing this stuff in there, that it's put into, if you're going to put it into your tank, actually anywhere, you want to put it into the tank, into an area where there's a lot of water flow. Uh, and this is important to prevent sediment from build up, building up and stuff like that. So, that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to sign off now. You've seen my auto top off system. You've seen how to do a small little DIY dosing kit. And that's pretty much it. I will talk to you all next time. Hope you learned something. Come over to the Talking Reef Podcast website, TalkingReef.com, and post any questions or anything that you may have about this or any of the other stuff that we talked about.